Okay, today we want to talk about one of the most important aspects of the geometry of the front end of your bike and how that actually impacts on the way the bike handles and why we designed the RC529 and 627 the way that we have. Um, I guess at the head of that list of the numbers that we sweat so that you can rely upon good handling is the trail of the bike. So I just wanted to explain first of all what trail is. Where you find it on the machine it actually affects the handling of the bike to a large extent when you're riding on a flowing trail, on a climbing trail, uh, when you're diving through corners. It affects many aspects of the bike, um, the way even the dropper seat post works. Actually, I lied about that last one. So, if we were to look quickly at what trail is, if we project a line through the center of the steering axis, which is through the center of the head tube, this angle, which is a head tube angle. Project that down to the ground. We actually have a point on the ground here. The second point that we need to arrive at is the center of the contact patch of the tire on the ground. So just take a couple of straight edges, slide those into the tire, like so. The center of the contact patch is the middle of those, which nominally let's say there. So our trail is the center of the contact patch to the center of the steering axis that's projected through the head tube and there's your trail quite clearly shown on the ground. Now whilst we're looking at this we can also see a couple of other important geometrical handling dimensions. One is the head tube angle uh, head tube angle is the one we've just projected through the steering axis and the head tube angle is important in as much as it actually controls the way that the bike steers as you lean into the corner. It helps the tyre to lean into a corner to automatically steer so you almost have the sensation of without turning the handlebars you lean the bike and if you lean to the left it turns to the left, you lean into the right, it turns to the right. We also have this thing called fork offset. Fork offset is effectively the difference between the same line we've drawn through the steering axis and then the amount that the axle is offset at right angles to that line. We also have uh, an angle that sometimes is referred to as rake or caster. And caster actually is from the centre of the axle vertically drawn to the angle through the steering axis, and this is caster or rake. Motorcycles and mountain bikes nearly always, however, use head angle as a reference, um, which is taken as an angle relative to the ground. So just to confirm then, if we have a wheel, the centre is the axle, this is the offset, from this point to this point, and this projected up is the steering axis, is a head tube. So project that steering axis down to the ground. And the center of the contact patch is here. Or if we project the axle down, one of the same thing with the bike is stationary. There is the trail. Difference between central contact patch, projected steering axis. Now let's just explain a little bit why trail is so important to the handling of your bike. <clears throat> so if we take this little plan, but view it from above, this is the direction that we're riding in. This is the center of the axle. And if we look from above, that's actually the point where the steering axis touches the ground. But this time let's put the wheel at an angle. Trail has this magical thing called restoring torque or torque. What that really does is, in an ideal world, it restores the wheel back to the center line and the direction of travel. So, for example, if the trail is positive, in other words, the trail figure is actually behind the steering axis point when it touches the ground, it's not in front, it's actually behind, that's called positive trail. And in this instance, with positive trail, you have a restoring torque that actually twists the wheel back into its centre line. 
So, if you hit something, then actually the wheel responds by restoring itself as it's being deflected back to the centre line of the direction of travel, which is a great thing to have. Um, there is a, an however. So you would think, therefore, that if actually torque gives you a restoration of the wheel back to its direction of travel centre line, which is a great thing, then increasing the trail would actually increase this feature and that would be a positive. Well, that's true. However, there is a downside. The more that you increase the trail figure, the positive trail, then actually the machine becomes less agile and the steering becomes heavier and slower. Conversely, as you reduce the trail, you can do that by adjusting the head tube angle or the fork offset to make it smaller, then actually the steering still has a trail effect, a restoring um, torque feature, but the steering becomes a little lighter, easier to turn, the machine's more agile, uh, and it's less heavy in the steering. So you can see that by determining exactly the right amount of trail, you've got a reasonable restoring torque, but you've got reasonably light steering, and you've also got a machine that's reasonably agile. Um, there is another, however, that in fact this point here, where we determine the dimension of trail, which is essentially the contact patch of the tire, only applies when the machine is static. As soon as it starts rolling and it hits a bump, then the trail position moves. So if we actually have a bump here on the trail, then the contact patch is no longer here, but the contact patch is actually here as the wheel rolls up on the bump. And then the trail actually reduces and reduces till it's on the center line of the steering, and then you have zero trail. Uh, and then the handle becomes very light. If the actual bump it's here, right in front of the tyre, ahead of the steering axis. So now the trail is here. We have negative trail. You'll know that feeling very, very well when you hit a bump and the bike just fires you off into the undergrowth. The machine loses its restoring torque and you don't have that directional stability of the bike. So finding the right balance between trail, head angle and fork offset, um, for different wheel sizes is also important. And so what you'll find is that the head angle on the 627 is 65. And generally, the slacker the head tube angle, lower that value in other words, then the greater amount of trail you should have. And we determine these two so that with this diameter of wheel, the steering is light but stable. However, when we introduce a larger wheel, more inertia wants to tend to carry on a straight line because of that, then if we reduce that down, maybe by a degree on the 529, but increase the fork offset to 51, it changes the trail. So even with a larger wheel, the machine is still agile. It still has its restoring torque value and even though it has a 29 inch wheel relative to a 27 and a half, both of them have equal stability and agility. In the 529 with the 29 er wheel, we want the machine still to be agile and we want it to be lively and urgent. And so actually by steepening the head tube angle, just by a degree, shortening the trail by increasing the fork offset, it gives the machine still some good restoring torque but it also makes the steering quite light, so the bike feels lively and agile. It doesn't feel, doesn't have the bad wrap that 29 has always used to have, which was slow to turn. And here are the reasons why earlier designs of 29 ers were slow to turn in and got that bad reputation, because these figures weren't calculated correctly to give you the right lively feeling. Whereas on the 627, with a lighter wheel, a bit more trail gives you a bit more stability, brings it more in line to what a 29 is like, but still is lively, still has a correct amount of restoring torque, um, has a slightly increased amount of trail created by a different head tube angle, and also a smaller fork offset. On designs of forks, um, they have, you will always notice, 
um, the axle is offset from the slider casting. In other words, it's not on the center line of it. It's actually offset to the front. Actually, that actually stiffens up the assembly. And actually, by having a small amount of offset or pulling the slider further into the center line of the steering axis, then you're not hanging this mass out, cantilevering it off the center line. You're pulling it more central to the steering axis, which reduces the weight of the steering and livens up the steering a little bit. But of course, if you go for a smaller offset fork, like 46 or even 38 or whatever, then by doing that, you're actually increasing the trail. You're actually then starting to make the steering heavier, which on a 29er then gives it that garden gate type feel and you have to try and get the balance of those correct, which we think we have here at 66 and 65 here 627 and here 529 models. If you want to arrange these figures mathematically, if you want to understand how to calculate trail, then you can use the simple equation here where R is the railway radius of the wheel with sin and zero actually being a caster angle. And you can use trail. Remember caster angle is actually that angle here, isn't it this one? Um, with your fork offset over cause and caster angle. Two units of maths, that's reasonably straightforward. Yes. Yes. Yes.